Welcome to Pop Turnative, where we dive into topical discussions from the worlds of pop culture, social media, and sports. Here is your host, Peter Romoliotis, aka PD Beats. PD Beats here from Pop Turnative, speaking to Olga Menedes about Blockbuster, premiering worldwide on Netflix November 3rd. Welcome to the show. Thank you so much for your time. Thank you. Nice to meet you, PD. Nice to meet you. This is pretty crazy because I remember when this show was announced. Like, no casting information, no plots, right? Just like blockbuster show on Netflix. And now we're talking about it and it's coming out like very soon. Like, it's, like I can't even imagine. Like, has it hit you that it's like coming out pretty soon? Like, is it starting to this week? I know what you mean. I know what you mean. I can't believe how I, I felt like we just finished shooting it yesterday. You know, and then now it's really happening and I'm thrilled, excited and nervous, you know, um, and I hope that people really, really enjoy it. We put our hearts and souls. It's going to be so funny. We need the show, you know, and I hope people connect with the characters and with uh, the sense of community and and um, I'm very excited. As an actor and a storyteller, what is your mindset with the workplace comedy where the landscape is so man- like massive and popular? And there's been many shows in the past as well that have had, like you said, all these characters and it's ensemble cast and so many, like, so many characters we connect with in different episodes and there's more focal points. What is your mindset just generally about working in a workplace comedy, Olga? Well, I mean... I was just trying to be true to the character and trying to, uh, we were all kind of working together very closely, not only as a cast, but also we were really behind the main character, Randall Park's character of Timmy, who's trying to save this last, um, last store. And he puts us in, 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 you know, in, in tremendous, ridiculous, uh, you know, situations that we have to get out of. And, and, and um, I, we were just trying to really be true to the story, true to Vanessa Ramos's concept and Jackie Clark's writing also. And um, just, 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 I think people are longing for community and longing for connection. And I think that's what we offered them. And yep. that's what happens. We're, we're, we're more than just coworkers. We're kind of like, we're in each other's mm-hmm. business you know, we're almost like a, a dysfunctional family in a way. And um, I I love doing this, this, uh, this show. Uh, you know, I, I love working for Netflix and doing this show. It was, uh, I'd never done a, a workplace comedy. Yep. And I just think it's just hilarious, you know. One of my favorite things about the show too, Olga, is there's, this perfect kind of blend of those kind of over the top funny moments where you laugh but it's got the heart. Do you notice that balance when you're reading the scripts early on that you have a lot of that kind of over the top humor, but the show kind of maintains this unbelievable amount of heart throughout the series, which I love a lot as well. I'm really glad you mentioned that because I, I also think that, yes, it, it, you're going to, there, people are just going to enjoy it. And we really need a comedy right now with everything that's happening in the world, but there is a lot of heart. And, um, um, Vanessa Ramos and um, Jackie Clark, they that that's kind of instinctual for them. That's who they are. Mm-hmm. And um, that was part of the reason I wanted to do this this show, because it's not just a, you know, a ha ha comedy because you will ha- laugh, but yeah. it's um it's got backbone. It's got heart. It's uh, especially especially Timmy's character, Randall Park's character. Yes. All all of the characters, but especially him, you know, he's trying so hard. You just want to love him. You're rooting for him. And he's so positive and he's trying so hard that um, I think people are really going to connect with him, especially all all of us, but especially uh, Randall Park's character, who's the lead and he's the big boss and he's, you know, uh, fighting to keep the store alive and, yeah, it's interesting, too, because, you know, Olga Meredith is a storyteller. That's what you do. And a lot of storytellers 
get it like have different paths of, of of getting into acting and producing directing but they all do it for that one reason they love the art they love the craft they want to make things and everything and and you're working in like a workplace comedy about playing characters that just love movies which i think is like a full circle moment have you thought about that at all <laughs> yes i mean i know it is it is kind of loopy right um <laughs> yeah i i remember being on set and i'm like yeah, I'm an actress doing movies and I'm talking about actors in movies and movies. <laughs> so it's like, it's, um, yeah, it's wild. Yeah, it is wild. And, you know, I discovered with Blockbuster some of my favorite movies and I would go beg my parents to go back and like, re like re rent the movies again and again. Right. And it's crazy because one of my favorite things about like going to Blockbuster is, and I guess in the di digital age, you get this, but all the different sections of the horror section, the comedy section, <laughs> everything that was like the best part. Right. It felt like there were like many little villages, you know what I mean? <laughs> yes, exactly. What was it like filming those kind of like workday scenes with everyone, with Tyler Madeline specifically, knowing that like that's kind of a place where everyone kind of came together to find different movies? Like, I'm just curious about those days shooting those uh, scenes specifically. Well, I mean, the, uh, you know, <laughs> it would be, okay, we're in the horror section today. Okay, horror section. <laughs> You know, you know what I mean? Um, comedy or movie musicals over here. And um, it, it, it really, uh, it was, it was kind of like very, very fun to have just a section for every, you know, every genre you can think of. Yep. And I was telling uh, someone earlier that when you, I remember going to Blockbuster, uh, like on a date night. And just going to Blockbuster was part of the date. That's where it mm -hmm. started. Yeah. You know, choosing the picture. The guy wanted to see a war movie. I wanted mm -hmm. to see, a, you know, a, a rom-com or something. Yeah. And uh, and that's where, and, and you get to know the other person, of what, you know, why they chose that movie or whatever. And um, and, and so to be in, in the studio, in these different, it, it just brought me back. It yeah. brought me back to going to know what about horror? What about a war movie? No, what about a comedy? What about, a, you know, yeah. I don't know. There's something very special about that. It kind of delineates yeah. all the all the genres and, you know, it helps you decide what you want to watch. And depending on the mood you're in, you might yeah. be in one of, the, one of the sections a little more. <laughs> exactly, exactly. And don't forget when you go and you're like, you make your decision, right? You go to pay for your the movie but you also have another decision, right? Because you have to, what snack are you going to get while you eat, while you watch your movie, right? Like the candy section of Blockbuster was always right. the section too. It was an experience going to Blockbuster. It, it was an experience. It really, really was, you know, it was, um, it was just fun. Yeah. It was fun. And I think that this show, it just captures that, you know? Yeah, absolutely. Uh, People coming in and wanting a specific, uh, we want to see this. We don't want that. We want, you know, and so uh, it, it really captures that. Absolutely. I did mention that you were a storyteller. Is one of the best things about being a storyteller, diving into all these different worlds and playing all these different characters, diving into the world of In the Heights and Kanto, Blockbuster, is that like one of your favorite things about being a storyteller and doing what you do? Um, that's a really good question. Um, yes, I guess it, it is because you get to play different characters. Yep. You get to play things that you might, you know, characters you might not be, you get to express yourself and you might not be able to do that in real life. You know, real yep. life can be, a, can be boring. Yeah. You, know? <laughs> you know what I'm saying? I mean, there are Absolutely. some highlights but in general, it's like paying bills, got to go to the grocery store, you know, got to do this. And so when you get to play these fantastical characters, you know, Connie, you know, in, in Blockbuster, when she gets to dance yep. and and um, <laughs> it's like it's it's fun to to play all these very different, different kind of characters. Yes, there's all. 
I feel like there's a difference between, you know, you as like a person, as a viewer, what you love to like, is there a difference between like your favorite movies to like to watch your favorite genres to watch and your favorite genres to work in? Right. Like there's a big difference. Like, do you, or are you like, like when you're a storyteller, do you become more well-rounded? Are you like learn to kind of love watching a lot of the genres? Cause you also work in a lot of genres. Do they go hand to hand a little bit? Well, that's, I think what you said first is is right on for me. Yeah. I I mean, I like to do comedy and yeah. I haven't had a chance to do comedy uh, very much. So I definitely wanted to work with Vanessa Ramos and this cast. But I like to watch pretty much everything. I like to watch documentaries. Mm -hmm. I like to watch, um, you know, historical dramas. Mm -hmm. I love the English shows. And Netflix has all that variety for everyone, you know, to to watch all at one time or or one mm -hmm. at a time. And um, yeah, I think you have to be well-rounded as an actor. Yep. You have to kind of really see and read everything. So that informs you when you're when you're performing. Absolutely. Ensemble cast, Olga, really interests me in terms of mindsets and kind of preparing <laughs> yourself because you worked on a lot of projects like Blockbuster as well, where you're working with a lot of people and your character has specific relationships with certain people uh, more than others rather than others. But, you know, you it, you kind of mingle with a lot of characters. What is your mindset knowing that you're going to be working with a lot of people in one kind of body of work specifically? I'm curious about that. Yeah, nobody's ever asked me that. That's really a great question because, you know, the set is so busy. There's a hundred crew people. There's like the camera, this, the, the makeup person, this, and then everybody's cracking up and working with very young people. You know, they're all over the place. They're on TikTok. They're, <laughs> you know, they're taking selfies. They're like, <laughs> it's like the in the high TikToks was just took <laughs> over the world. <laughs> yes. So I had to really focus. Yep. You know, I had to like, okay, shh, just focus. What do I have to say? What are my lines? <laughs> you know, because it's hard. It's hard yeah. to just get your, you know, keep your what's the character's intention in this scene? Yeah, it's hard. It's hard. Yeah, absolutely. What is that mindset on Blockbuster specifically where, you know, there's Tyler, there's Madeline, there's Randall, there's Melissa, right? And like, there's all these conversations, like there's these, like a lot of conversations your character is having with these like characters, but they're all different kind of conversations because everyone I feel like in the store is very different, has different tastes in movies, has a lot going on in their life. What are those conversations like as actors with Randall and Tyler about kind of the scenes you have specifically with them? Because that's one of my things I love about the show. You have the everyone together moments, but different characters have cool one-on-ones and like trios. I love that as well, too. Yeah, well, it, it, was, it was really a, a study in human relationships. You know, it, it as actors, we really have to observe people observe ourselves mm -hmm. and it, during blo it, blockbuster it was a lot of very quick and mm -hmm. also very deep and and funny and you have to really focus like i said and you kind of you you kind of have to get out of everybody's way so that yep. they can do their thing you know Absolutely. their bang <laughs> whatever so you don't want to you know mess anybody up and <clears throat> it's kind of it's very complex really yep. and um and it's this ensemble work, you have to just, you have to cooperate, but you have to let the person do their job too. You got to kind of get out of their way. You know what I'm saying? Absolutely. No, that's a very well said. And I find it interesting because we go back to our conversation about, you know, me growing up going to Blockbuster. I When I would go rent a movie, I knew what I was signing up for. Like I was watching, I was getting an action. I was getting a horror. I was getting a comedy. And I feel like we're... <laughs> We're in an age now of genre bending, Olga. There's a lot of genre bending happening. You put on a movie and you're like, am I watching a comedy? Am I watching a horror? Am I watching a drama? And exactly. Do you think it just, I feel, I, I guess it depends on the project, but do you think that just like happens or is that premeditated, do you think? Like genre bending? I think it depends on the project, right? That's a very good question. I think people want everything now. <laughs> they want drama. They want to laugh. They want to cry. They want to, 
You know, it's like. But it's trendy you know, now. Like genre bending is the thing. It's trendy, like TikTok, like hot sauce. During the pandemic, remember hot sauce was huge. Everyone was buying different yes. hot sauces and everything. It's like the thing. I don't think in like growing up, I don't think someone woke up and was like, I'm going to make Olga. I'm going to make the next vampire comedy horror drama. I don't think like that happened <laughs> you know what i mean i think it just yeah. like now i think it might be like premeditated i i think so but i find it's interesting yeah it's a sign of the times things are this is what's trending now you i have to think about that <laughs> you know it's very because interesting it was it was more defined you're right and I think it's a great thing because I love these movies and these shows that are pushing the envelope, that are throwing in elements. And, you know, when you watch Blockbuster, getting back to what I was saying about the combination of the heart and about the, you know, the the, the comedy moments, like the slapstick moments and everything, that great balance. Um, there's serious undertones in a lot of, of, of sitcoms and workplace comedies like this because a lot of characters, like you said, Randall's character, are going through a lot of stuff you know what i mean so like i feel like that's yes. important as well right yes because you can't do a comedy that's just fluff you can't yeah. you ha have to be grounded in in reality mm -hmm. uh because yeah like you say people are going through people are going through stuff now and mm -hmm. our world is like let's not even talk about it yeah. <laughs> so People want, I think people want to laugh and, and people are going to forget about all their troubles when they see Blockbuster, yep. but they're also going to connect and relate to these characters Yes, and they're going to, um, they're going to see themselves. Yeah. You know, see themselves. And that's my, my, my last question before we wrap up as well is Randall's character is doing a lot of self-reflection and he's doing a lot of soul searching. You know what I mean? There's like the saving the blockbuster, but he has a lot of stuff going on with his personal life as well. During the pandemic, Olga, we have been doing a lot of self-reflection and soul searching because we've had the time to do so. Right? Hello. Um, so I feel like blockbuster shows like, like blockbuster become instantly more relatable to the audience because we've been doing a lot of self-reflection and soul searching. I'm curious if you thought about that at all, specifically with blockbuster. Yes, I agree with you. Um, I think um, especially Timmy's character and Melissa's character, Eliza, uh, uh, Eliza and Timmy, they're mm -hmm. both going through a lot. Um, and um, yeah, these past two years, people went through a lot. They're still we're still going through a lot. And, mm -hmm. um, you know, people are just they they're craving for connection, community. Mm -hmm. Um, you know, people, people are just like, you know, what's going on? And I think that Blockbuster brings that back, brings that, mm -hmm. that nostalgia, that, that, that of how, how we, we connect, how people need connection. It's a and warm hug. It is a warm hug. Exactly. <laughs> exactly. I think people are going to feel that. Absolutely. It's a uh, premiere worldwide. It's, it's dropping worldwide on Netflix, November 3rd. Olga. It was an honor and privilege to speak with you. Thank you so much for coming on Pop Turn. Oh my God, Petey, you're so much fun anytime. No problem. Well, this has been Pop Turn. I really appreciate you saying that. Well, this has been Pop Turn. YouTube.com slash Pop Turn for previous episodes. Look out for Blockbuster premiering November 3rd on Netflix. Until next time, it's Olga and Petey Beats signing off. Thank you for tuning in to Pop Turn Make sure to check out our past episodes of Pop Turn on YouTube. Be sure to like Popternative on Facebook and follow us on Twitter. This has been an Autograph Communications production.